In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can create progress bars in Notion when you have a list of projects and a list of tasks that are related to those projects. We'll be using the concepts of relational databases and rollups in Notion to come up with this beautiful progress bar. And don't worry, I'm going to make it as simple as possible. It's really not that complicated. And we're starting right now. Welcome to another video here at the Productivity Corner YouTube channel. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to get more organized, save time and be more productive, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you don't miss anything. We're going to start off this video by answering this question by Wakar. So he wants to know how he can use his project database and his task database and use the relation and the rollout feature in Notion to be able to create the progress bar. That's a really good question Wakar. Thank you so much for sending that through. So the first thing we're going to do is create a project database. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. The next thing we're going to do is create a task database. Next, we're going to create a linkage or a relation between the task database and the projects database. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click on this second column we'll go and create a relation and in the drop down notion will give you a list of all the different databases that are within your notion account but we need to make sure that we actually link it to the project list for productivity corner because that is the database that holds the right projects that we need to link to these tasks so let's go ahead and start typing the, the database name So we've selected the correct database now. Let's hit the create relation button. Let's quickly rename that. And what you'll notice is that as soon as we created a relation between this task database and the projects database, Notion has automatically created this column, which is called related to task list for productivity corner column. So it's got the same name as our task list database. That's another way of us making sure that we've linked the two correct databases together. So let's go ahead and add projects to the various tasks. So we're gonna say that the first five tasks are all related project number one and the last two tasks are related to project number two once again as soon as we've done that notion has automatically populated a list of all the tasks that are related to the associated projects so what we're saying here is that there is five tasks that we need to complete in order to finish project one and then there are two tasks that we need to complete in order to finish project number two obviously you can have more than more than seven tasks altogether. so let's say you have like a hundred tasks and you and instead of you having to count each and every single task a very quick way you could work out the number of tasks that are linked to the project is actually creating a rollup. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now when we click into the empty cell, Notion will give you three different options to select from. The first one is it's asking you which relation we want to be able to link this rollup to. So if we click on the drop down, it will give us the list of the task database that we've already related earlier. So we'll go ahead and select that. The next thing we need to fill out is the property. So Notion is asking us from this task list database, which column do you want to roll up the information for? So it will initially default to the very first column which is always the name property and as you can see within the background it's already populated the name of the task from column one so what we want to do is click on this drop down and then here Notion will give you a list of all the columns in the task database. At the moment, it's just giving us two options because we've only got two columns. If we had more than two columns, it would give us a list of all the columns within the task list database. So in this case, we're going to leave it as the name column. And then the third option we need to select from is the calculate. When you're using rollups and you're not using a number field, Notion should give you a list of all these options. It can work out for you automatically. So for instance, when we click on the show original, all it's doing at the the moment is just replaying us back what the name column currently has within it if we click on the show unique values it will show us all the unique values and in this case every single value is unique therefore it's you don't see much of a difference so the next one is where it starts to get interesting so if I select the count all what it's done is that it's worked out that there are five tasks that are related to project one there are two tasks that are related to project two and that's really handy if you have like hundreds of tasks that are related to a project 
rather than you having to go down and count every single one, Notion can very quickly count all those tasks for you without having to do it manually. So we're gonna leave it at that for now. But if you're interested in learning more about rollups and relational databases in Notion, then I'll put a link to the video above that you can check out. So now we've got a basic concept of a projects and a task database and the two are linked together. And we're also starting to use the rollup function to be able to link the two together. In order for us to create a progress bar that links the two together, we need to be able to tell Notion that a task is either complete or not complete. So let's go ahead and create another column in here. And we're gonna make that into a checkbox. So let's go ahead and mark some of these tasks as completed. That looks good. Next, we're gonna head back to our project list because that's where we want to be able to create the progress bar. So we'll go ahead and create another rollup column and we'll call it percentage complete. And then we can click on the configure roller or we can simply click on the cell and it'll take us to the same option. And again, we're gonna select the task list database. But in this case, instead of using the column with the name of the task, as we did previously, we're gonna change that and we're gonna select the completed column, which is a new one that we've just created. And the final thing we're gonna do is change the calculate to be a percentage check. So that looks really good. Based on the five tasks that were related to project one, we marked four of them as complete. Therefore, Notion has worked out using the roll-up function that 80% of our tasks are completed. Similarly, for project number two, out of the three tasks, we said that only one was complete. Therefore, Notion has worked out that there's percentage complete in this case is 33%. So we can use this column now to be able to work out our progress bar because the very basic thing that you need to be able to create a progress bar is a concept of something that's been completed. So let's create another column and we're gonna change this to a formula this time around. For the purpose of this tutorial I'm gonna copy the formula that I previously worked out so here's a number of examples that we could use as a progress bar within our projects database in this video, I'm not going to cover how to create those in detail, but if you're interested in learning about how the formula works, then I'll put a link to the video where I walk through each and every single one of these examples and break down the formula step by step so you can understand it and be able to replicate that yourself in the future. So I'll put a link to the video. We're going to go ahead and select this particular progress bar. So let's open that up, copy the formula and we'll head back. So now that we're back, we're going to open up our formula and we're going to paste this in. Okay, so we can see there's a progress bar being created. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we need to change for this progress bar to work in this example. So the first one will be changing it so that we can see the populated progress bar. So the second thing we'll change is the percentage values. And the third thing is we're going to round the value so it doesn't have this endless decimal places showing up. Let's go ahead and do that now. In order to demonstrate exactly what changes I'm gonna to make to the formula, I'm gonna open up a code block and walk it through in that. So I'll paste the formula in here and I'm just gonna change formatting so it's easier for us to see on the page rather than being scrolled across like this. So every time I see it, if I'm going to create a page break. And I'll just show you the different parts of the formula now. So the first thing we're gonna update in the formula for this progress bar to work properly is to change the range into decimal places. And that's because this formula assumes that the percentage completed column is not actually a percent to begin with. So let me just quickly demonstrate that. We looked at the 80% range, which is this range over here. Then we wanna be able to change this 80 into 0.08. Now let's paste this formula back in. And the way we paste this formula back in is by opening up a web browser, pasting the formula, and then copying the formula, and then going back into Notion and then simply pasting it in. Let's click done. So as you can see, that has fixed the problem. So now we're gonna go ahead and change all of the ranges to be starting with a 0. 0.0. If your percentage complete column wasn't a percentage, then you'd need to be able to do this as I've demonstrated in my other video that I'll link here. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and paste that back into the formula. Uh, so the reason why that's not worked is because we've got the top range as being 0 0.1 instead of it should actually be 1.0 because that should be the highest number. So we're starting off with 0.0, .0 and going all the way up to one. Let's quickly go ahead and paste that again and see if that works. And that's looking good. So it's populating eight bars for when it's 80% and it's populating three bars for when it's 33%. So that progress bar is working as we expect it to work. And that's this part of the formula, part one. So you'll notice that it's dropped off the percentage value and the percentage sign at the end. And that's because I've broken the formula up into these four parts. So at any point we can add these other parts in to be able to complete the formula. So the next thing we wanted to be able to fix is instead of this showing up as 33.33, 
0.3333%. We wanted to be able to round that number off to the nearest whole number. And the way we do that is we come into our formula and we use a round function. Let me go ahead and do that. So let's paste this into the formula and see, see what happens. So I'm going to start combining the formulas again now. I'll still keep it in separate lines so you can see the difference. So I'll give it a space. So we've changed this part of the formula. Now let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So that's not quite giving us the right number. As you can see, it's, it's changed the 80 into a 1 and it's changed the 33.3 into 0.3. So what we need to do is go back into our formula and we need to multiply the rounded number by 100. We'll put another bracket, close the argument off and we'll click done. There you go. That looks great. So that's looking exactly how I would like it to look. So just to see if it's working correctly for other percentages, let's go ahead and change some of the completed tasks and see what impact that has on the progress bar. So I'm going to move this code block down and move the task database up so we can see them together. So that's 80%. So if we mark all of the tasks in project one as complete, you can see that changes to 100%. If I change project one again, let's say we've only done one task, which is task five as part of project one, and you can see that changes to 20%. So that's exactly what we'd expect. And the same on project number two let's go ahead and see what happens when we've got two so when we've got two out of the three tasks complete it percentage complete is 66.7 percent and our rounding function on the number makes it 67 percent and we've got seven bars displaying as being completed and then we'll change that to 100 percent so that's a very quick way of creating a progress bar when you have a project and a task database associated to it. If you haven't done so already, then I encourage you to check out this video, which is related to progress bar in Notion, where I walk you through how you can change this to be any emoji you want. And also where I talk through the formula in a lot more detail. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about Notion, then I recommend that you check out this video video next.